Last year we talked about the idea of Valve releasing a console, a Steam Deck but for your television and only your television, a Steambox 2.0. To catch you up, there was firmware that was released for the Steam Deck that when data mined showcased a new version of the hardware called Galileo. Galileo had functions not too dissimilar to a television-based box that you would place and play games on. One of those features was a proximity sensing lit power button, or power ring with a touch sensitive panel. In fact, one of the members of the Steam hardware team filed a patent specifically for a touch sensing, proximity sensing, lit power button. In the lead up to Half-Life Alex, Jeff Keighley had pictures and videos of himself playing Half-Life Alex. This one in particular. It's right there. A box that has a lit, proximity sensing, touch sensitive power button. So that was, at the time, what we called codename Galileo. And I mean, we all do play video games, and there's a lot of video games out there. Well, there is this one video game. Oh, I do know of this one video game I wanted to tell you about. Right, yeah, it's uh, Castle Duels. It's this new strategic deck builder that combines real-time PvP and tower defense mechanics into something fresh. You're summoning and merging 3D units to defend your castle while strategizing your offense to completely outsmart your opponent. It's fast-paced, strategic, and genuinely rewarding when you pull off a clever play. The Winter Wonderland event is live right now, bringing in exclusive seasonal rewards, the Frost Knight unit, and a festive roulette packed with legendary prizes. I've been experimenting with some new strategies during this event, and the merge mechanic has honestly stood out to me. Every choice feels impactful, and there's always something new to learn. Castle Duels is free to download on both iOS and Android. And here's the kicker, they're sponsoring today's video. If you want to give it a try, use the QR code on screen or the link in the description or pinned comment to start playing. Plus, there are bonus rewards waiting for you through that link. So, huge thanks to Castle Duels for supporting the channel. If you're into quick, tactical matches with tons of strategic depth, give it a shot. And hey, if you run into me online, good luck, because I've gotten very good. So these findings were found both by Brad Lynch, AKA sadly it's Bradley, and Foxlit Fox. So thank you to them for putting this together. Codename Galileo. It seemed to, at the time, have more to do with a separate box that would wirelessly stream VR games to the Deckard headset. Although now this is effectively a console. You plug it into your television, you use a controller running the same software as the Steam Deck, but far more powerful than anything the Steam Deck by itself is capable of. About a week ago, new information was found on a new hardware codenamed Fremont. Fremont is running a far more powerful AMD APU than the Steam Deck. An APU, by the way, is a chip that has both a CPU and a GPU built within it. The Steam Deck runs on an APU. According to known references, this Fremont device is running on an AMD APU codenamed Lilac. For the longest time before the Steam Deck, most testing was done on a separate test board running an AMD APU codenamed Picasso. Okay, let me introduce you to Evelav. Evelav self-describes as the quote, unofficial Valve public mirror maintained until Valve publicizes their private SteamOS and Steam Deck GitLab repositories. Within that, you're able to data mine a lot of hardware-related developments, very similar to how we use the SteamDB diff checker GitHub page in order to data mine software. Quality assurance, aka testing was done on this device by a company called Quanta Computing, and Valve brought in the debug changes within this specific change. These changes reference the AMD Lilac APU. The APU is running on a prototype board codenamed F7F. So on this page, the code names to follow are F7A is the Steam Deck LCD, F7G is the Steam Deck OLED, and F7F is codename Fremont. On this file, pushed about four weeks ago, specifically again, on QA testing, mentions Fremont outright, and references how this Fremont device is wired directly to a full-sized HDMI A port not a USB-C that has HDMI output like the Steam Deck, an actual HDMI port. Something that really is only seen for dedicated devices that sit, not portable ones. There was a change pushed that specifically name drops the Fremont. Quote, updating CEC endpoint for Fremont. Okay, so by the way, CEC is an HDMI feature. It allows the controlling of devices through the HDMI port so that devices can communicate with each other through the video cable. This 
This is updating a microcontroller called the Chrome OS CEC. This work is allowing whatever the Fremont device to communicate with whatever display it is plugged into. This communication is done over a full-sized HDMI port. The fact that this is called a Chrome OS CEC has nothing to do with the Chrome OS operating system and instead is just used for Chromebooks to have HDMI output that can communicate with displays. It's open source, so anybody can use that standard. So to summarize, Valve is developing a new piece of hardware on a prototype board codenamed F7F, which is an iteration past the Steam Deck OLED prototype board. This board runs an AMD Lilac APU, an unknown processor that is far and away more powerful than anything that runs currently on the Steam Deck. This prototyped device has HDMI communication protocols to communicate with displays, and it's being used with a full-sized HDMI A port. Assuming that the Fremont is the Steam console, it's just a very powerful, purpose-built computer that runs SteamOS and the Steam Deck interface, it would probably use that big-ass controller that we saw leaked last month. Yeah, this one. It's effectively a Steam Deck without the screen. You've got the control sticks, you've got the touch pads, you've got, you've got all the triggers, including the back ones, but of course, it's really just a wait-and-see scenario. Valve very much wants to be able to create the Steam ecosystem that they first teased back in 2015 at GDC. They were never able to achieve Steam Universe back then, but they very well could now. Everyone loves the Steam Deck, everyone's trying to copy the Steam Deck, and so why not try and push it a little bit further? Any Steam device will likely have some compatibility with any other Steam device, so exactly how the Deckard or Steam Deck would interface with this computer is unknown. But it should be assumed that this computer would likely come with that big-ass controller. Another thing that Valve is working on on top of everything else. It's an ongoing story, so get subscribed if you're at all interested in the future of the Valve Fremont or the Valve Deckard. I'm Tyler McVicker, The Passionate Gamer. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to keep up with the community, Community, see what I'm working on and talk about anything that I could be working on, the Discord invite link is down in the description below, and I will see you next time. Peace and hair grease. Adios.